Hello everybody and welcome to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven. We're going to cast this amazing tournament for you. As you can see, we started already with Colento versus Stan Sivka. Raven, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. And uh, yeah, just going straight into one of the... Uh, well, this whole tournament's full of big names, actually. Some of the biggest, but this game's looking to be uh, shaping up pretty good. Colento using what looks like Maligos Warlock uh, and Stan Sivka taking the, uh, the tried and tested Druid. Yeah, and uh, wow, man, Stan Sivka's hand with the Aspirant and the Wild Growth, it looks really good. But on the other hand, Colento actually has ways to deal with that. He has uh, Dark Bomb for that Aspirant, and uh, he has Hellfire as well with the Drake. Yeah, this matchup is really interesting because um, something that the Druid can, like the way the Druid wins this matchup, because I think the Druid's slightly favored here, is that they just sort of pummel the Maligos Lock and then hope that the uh, Warlock can't really, you know, deal with the sort of bulky minions from the Druid. And then, you know, next minute there's four some Nature Savage draw and the game's over. But we can see Kalento, as you said, has got a reasonable hand. He's got a Hellfire, that Dart Bomb just cleared up the Aspirant, the Twilight Guardian for the Taunt, and then two Heal Bots. So you should be able to at least. Uh, you know, make this game go a little bit longer, which is exactly what Clinton's going to want to do here. Yeah, because with this deck, you just want to get to Maligos and then kill your opponent with the combo cards. But on the other hand, you do have a lot of minions that can actually deal with the board. Well, you have those board swipes, you have Blackwing Corruptor. So if you're able to actually keep the minions on board, you might be able to just uh, win the game with simple spells without Maligos even. Yeah, I think uh, the, the power of the Warlock deck here is that the mid-range minions sort of uh, almost go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Druid mid-range minions, actually. Like the Druid of the Claws and uh, Ancient of Lords, things like that. You know, like the big sort of bulky bodies, and the Warlock can actually match that with this Maligos deck, but Kalento is not actually drawing into any of them. He's drawing into, like, a lot of answers and sustain, but nothing uh, too crazy. The, if the Twilight Drake is a 4-6, isn't as big as you kind of want it to be as the Warlock, but it's going to be probably just enough to challenge this board now. And Stan Sivka has Thorison. Is this the turn for Thorison though? He does have a lot of great cards in hand already, so Azure Drake with Swipe will be a great combo. Uh, reduced by 2, uh, only for 7 mana, uh, maybe even playable next turn to finish off things. Uh, one part of, of the combo, Savage or Force, uh, Force of Nature being discounted, is also really important. So I think like Thorison might be... Uh, a great card here. Not only it's uh, reducing the cards, but it's also a 5-5 five, five on board. Yeah, if he didn't cast a, a, or play Thorison now, um, everything else that he could have done was just, just off. Either a mana sure or not quite clean enough in terms of killing the uh, Twilight Guardian. So, uh, pretty good play. Normally, you want the Thorison after cards like Drake and stuff to you know, cycle into the, the uh, say, the combo or you know other key cards. But this is pretty reasonable. It's sort of demanded an answer out of Kalento. And now, Swipe looking uh, pretty reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially because he can... S well, do you even swipe, though? Um, hmm. it, yeah, it's, I mean, swipe, Savage Raw could be pretty okay. Uh, with the zombie because child, he... I think you might swipe, because uh, you're doing more damage there. Um, it, but swipe, even even with the spell damage, is still a bit weird. Um, I think Innervate might be really important because now he can actually swipe the free six, attack into it with the uh, with the shapeshift, and not attack with Lothab into the free six. Yeah, that could be okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to. It's, it's really tough choices here because Swipe's actually you know really high value card in terms of damage, especially like you said with that spell power. It looks like he's going to go for the uh, Innervate play, as you said. This is really nice. It keeps Lothab on full health. The four four from the, the Twilight. Uh, there's your Drake, sorry, he's still on full health, so it's going to be really awkward for Kalento to clear this up, actually. Uh, Kalento does have that Hellfire, mm, so it will be able to help with uh, with Lothab. And oh, he has Coil as well. As well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he, he can... So the, the thing is here, like, Kalento can clear the board, and luckily for Kalento, Stansifka's only on three cards, and we can see that those three cards aren't... Uh, too heavily impact on the game at the moment. The Shade being able to come down after the Hellfire must feel pretty good for Stan Sivka, but he's definitely wanna, uh, gonna want to draw into sort of more impactful minions, and Aspirin really isn't one of them, actually. Well, to be honest, uh, Aspirin is a card that he can play here, and uh, a Force of Nature top deck can finish the game pretty fast. There is no Dragon for Colento to aid the Twilight Guardian, so it will not have Taunt. He will be able to play Corruptor, but the thing is, how much damage does Stansivka deal with a top-decked uh, Force of Nature? It will be 17 yeah. at least, right? Yeah. 
And this is the problem Calento faces in air. Everyone who plays against Druid faces is that once you get down to a certain amount of health, you, it's really difficult to not want to play around the Druid having the combo. Um, at this point from turn 9 onwards and when you do play around that a lot of the time you're actually making really inefficient plays uh, so like you might want to heal bot now to try and get out of range if, although I don't think heal bot is out of range now um, oh oh the, the drake could be pretty yeah, good actually, a dragon. to drop the taunt down yeah that's suddenly changed a few things but as I was saying like it's hard to play around the combo all the time um, because it makes you play so inefficient, you end up losing anyway a lot of the time. And Stan Sifka just filling the board up, prepping for that Savage Draw and whatever he made top deck. By the way, Raven, I was checking your math. The damage right there was 19, not 17. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's 17 shade. without the buff from the, the shade. See, this is. No, this isn't my math. This is me trusting. I'm too <laughs> trusting him. All right. You said, you said 17. I was like, sure, Nymph, she's right. That's fine. I'll try to be correct next time. <laughs> How much damage uh, there is at the moment? Oh, oh man, look at this! Yep, there Force. you go. <laughs> Finish it. It's obviously even more because of an Aspirant, but um, 17, 19 doesn't matter. He has lethal here, so Stan Sivka is taking this first game, and um, Druid is, is always good, especially versus those decks. Even though he had double kill in the hand, it wasn't enough to, to sustain. Yeah, it's really tough because, as I said, like it was so early on as he, like, you know, Stan Sivka went onto it on curve. It's hard to play five mana on a three three to heal for eight. You know, like it actually just isn't enough when the druid's pressuring with board alone. It's not like the druid had an empty board and all all uh, Kalento had to do was to, you know, like avoid that typical fourteen damage you expect. He actually had to um, you know, play around even more, which is just so difficult. All right, and uh, Raven, can you actually talk to me about um, the tournament itself? Because we just we just started, and this is an amazing tournament, ten thousand prize pool. What can you tell me about it? Yeah, so the tournament is is actually just super stacked. Um, in Group A that we're going to do today, we have Sixo, Kalento, Stansik, and Dog. Group B, Ecop, Adu, Pavel, and Hoy. Group C, is Show, Life Coach, Strive, Current Orange. Group D, Oskaka, Hannibal. Uh, sorry, Hannibal Z. Tides of Time and Tice. So like this is pretty much the uh, most stacked tournament of the year so far. I know we're quite early um, in terms of, of the year, but it's so it's so big. Literally the best players in the world are in this tournament. And it's going to be double limb from group stages. Uh, the top two go through um, and then we'll go into the playoffs after that. But we are into this uh, second game, which is Stan Sivka's Hunter versus Kalento's Warlock again. Yep. So the Hunter yeah, is looking like either just all face or at the most hybrid um this is highly aggressive and the good thing in this matchup is it's not like the hanlock matchup for hunter where if you play into molten giants which normally you can't avoid playing around uh, and then they slam two molten's heal and taunt you're in trouble uh stan Sifka can actually just go full face and sort of almost ignore the board to a certain extent because you know you're not gonna run into that awkward molten giant turn you just go full face and hope it's enough to be honest as a a little more to be said of it on, on the Hunter side, whereas Kalento has to really slow the Hunter down and just deal with um, all the threats, and getting Huffer is one of those uh, pretty early threats. So what do you think about this matchup overall? Is um, is it good for, for Hunter, or is it um, favoring the Warlock? Um, I think it's close, because it really does just revolve on a few key cards, like, say, the, the heal bots from Kalento, or the Owls from Stan Sivka. Um, if the Hunter can just keep tempo up and just keep going, then I think... Hunter doesn't struggle in this matchup, I'd say, unless the Warlock does go like Heelbot, Heelbot, and then taunt with no Owl or something, because then you just burn out of cards, as Hunters want to do. And, um, and you know, it becomes a little too late, and uh, if Kalento can stabilize with his Warlock, then he should be in a good position, because Kalento's not looking to actually win the game with the Maligos burst at the end. It's actually just surviving and outliving the Hunter more than anything. Colento goes for Twilight Garden at this moment, so um, there's a pretty good card to to try to survive, but this time he didn't get those healbots. Versus Hunter, I think healbot will be amazing. Yeah, it really does slow down the game enough for the uh, for the Warlock to stabilize, but even now, it, you know, Stan Sivka hasn't got the Owl to just Owl through the uh, taunt and carry on, but he does have a lot of damage and, you know, a lot of answers. I don't, I'm not quite sure what the, what the play is here, though, or what the favored play is. He he does have a lot of options. There's, um, He's got his two minions on. I guess he's running explosives potentially, so he could run both minions into the three six, and then maybe push with um, the bow. 
But because he's only on four mana, he can't like bow hero power or uh, you know horse hero power or anything like that. So it's just a little bit uh, awkward to play off kind of thing. Hmm. So you probably have to play off curve if you if you go for the hero power. Um, you will not be able to do much, and uh, just uh, playing a, a weapon maybe. You can put yes. your opponent at 15, it's a bit more damage this turn. And then you follow up next turn with another attack, and you'll 5 easily. Uh, actually 8 even. Yeah, and I think banking the bow is really good, because quick shot well, is too many. You can quick shot almost at any turn going forward. And then you've just seen a taunt as well. So the horse rider should be pretty safe because Malagos doesn't actually run too many taunts. So it's not like you go, you know, you're going to see taunt after taunt after taunt come up. And um, so you know, after he's dealing with the Twilight Guardian, he's pretty confident about the horse rider damage coming through. And now with the secret proc for the um, the freezing trap, then it's another stack on the bow. So really nice to see the bow locked in there. And Hunter's mark's pretty huge if any more taunts do come up. Absolutely. So Stansivka has a lot of damage if he goes for. Um that horse rider and hero power this turn, 7 damage, putting Colento at 8. So next turn he will have to kill, uh, if there is no taunt there, uh, and possible taunts as you mentioned, there's, there's, there was a guardian, there's sometimes a sludge belcher, uh, mostly a one-off. Uh, what other taunts are there in the deck? Is there even a defender of Argus? No, I don't think they even plays with Argus, because it not it, the Malilot normally re relies on like double heal bot and then removal in the form of, you know, the Hellfire that we see, probably Shadow Flame, um, and then the Corruptors, and, and then just the big minions to actually trade away the board, uh, as opposed to using too many taunts. So this is going to be really rough now for Kalento. He's played Emperor just to get the value here, and he just has to leave the two up, and uh, there's nothing he can do. Anything else doesn't win him the game, that's the problem. But we can see that this game's already over. Quick shot, such a powerful card, when combined with the hero power from the Hunter. And uh, yeah, Stansifka goes 2-0 up pretty quickly, and this is a pretty good deck for him to get up against uh, Kalento's Warlock again. Yeah, absolutely. And now he has his last deck. Let me quickly check what his last uh, class is. So for Stan Sivka, he still has a, a Warlock himself. So I wonder what kind of Warlock he will play. Yeah, there's so many variations, and that's what we're getting to in Hearthstone at the moment at least, where there's so many variations of all, like nearly all the classes. So with Warlock, there's um, like two types of zoo, like demon and the uh, more the zoo that's like more Gormok and maybe the seekers and the sea giants. And then there's you know Reno lock variants. There's variants within Reno lock. Then there's like hand lock, demon lock combos. You know, there's so much to look at. But this actually does look like maybe a more standard demon zoo than anything else. Yeah, it absolutely looks like demon zoo with the the Voiter and the power overwhelming. And Ooh. you know, I find it. Really interesting, uh, a really good start for Colento, but I find it really interesting that this Demon Zoo is still the deck to play. I've seen uh, when the brand got released and Dark Battlers, people people started playing a more fast version of Zoo, but it seems like they're back to the good old demons. Yeah, I think um, there's something to be said. If this is the uh, the, the Void Caller, um, there's something to be said for the power of that card alone. Like, you know, the Void Caller and into another demon is so much tempo, it's untrue. Um, but Kalento having a good start here, you know, double zombie chow, and then now with Coil against Zoo is definitely the opening you do want to see, so maybe, um, you know, he's, he's got the good enough start this game. Really interesting that Kalento's chosen to just lock in the same deck over and over again, and just try and get this win. He probably, because this is group stage, doesn't want to reveal his other decks to the opponents, actually, that will no doubt be watching and doing their homework. Yeah, that's true, because we are playing double elimination stage. If Colento loses this match versus Tansivka, he will have to wait for his next opponent, who will be the loser of the match, Dog versus Sixo. And then if he wins that, he ends up in the loser's final uh, in this specific group. And uh, winning that will uh, still av um, give him the spot to advance to the, to the top eight. Yeah, and a really decent trade there from the, the Die Wolf buffing up the one ones, which again, the, the like it's going to be really interesting going into standard when decks can't use cards like Creeper, um, because they're, they're so good at having tokens and then all these cards that buff them, the the Die Wolf, the abusive sergeant, getting things like Power Overwhelming or another abusive sergeant from the Dark Peddler. You know, the, there's a lot of options with these tokens from the Creeper, and uh, do see abusive come down or at least be an option. And there we go. I think yeah. he's going to just trade in. And then uh, put the 2-2 two -two into the 1-1, one -one, I suppose. Exactly. Uh, that's probably what you have to do, just to yep. deny uh, any possibility. And uh, this is so good for, for Stansivka, like a really good opening. Um, there is a Twilight Drake, though. Uh, 
You can also mortal call the wolf. This will actually limit, take four damage out of the board. So zombie child will have easier time doing with the small minions as well. Yep, Stan Sifka has got nice follow up though, and uh, again, just so many options. He's, the Dark Iron Dwarf can uh, buff something to just deal with this child, get it off the board. He could actually just defend with Argus if he wants to. I think that's maybe a little bit too early, if I'm honest, because there's still plenty of AoE in the deck that would ruin him. Um, Hmm, what do you actually like here? Maybe even juggler into uh, abusive and get the egg on the board. I think I like um, Dagron Dwarf because of the AoE you've mentioned. So on one um, on one hand we deal with the zombie chow and on the other we actually have a minion that's resistant to the hellfire. If you go with abu uh, abusive you uh, deal with the two free but then hellfire just uh, wipes your board unless you want to uh, play around hell hellfire a bit. But I yeah, don't I like juggler into Nerubian egg. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, the, the, the egg sort of uh, does the same job. You end with a 4-4 afterwards, as opposed to, say, a 4-1 from the, the Dark Iron Dwarf. But you do have to commit a lot more. And South Sifka's actually gone for the uh, the Defender of Argus, which is really interesting, because this just seems like it gets completely blown out by Hellfire. Yeah, but uh, it's not terrible as well. So if, if you go for Defender of Argus, if there is a Hellfire, you, you know that Hellfire is gone, like, at least one. So you can yeah. just uh, swarm your board afterwards. If there is no Hellfire, that was probably the biggest amount of um, of life at the very moment. And you still got the got the trade on the minion, and you actually protected your own minion. So that was a lot of damage he was able to um, to get on that board. Plus, keeping Dark Iron Dwarf in hand is a bit of a concealed damage. So your opponent can never expect exactly how much damage can deal on one turn. Yeah, MC Sansifka there. Just just see where the juggles land, depending on where he, you know, what minions he actually wants to trade in. Whether he trades in the peddler as a three one or bust the uh, defender of Argus, but to go with the Argus there. And this board now starting to look a little bit scary. And there's no heal in Kalento's hand, but he, th this is how how like how strong the egg is, I suppose. When you um you just put it on the board to sort of put your opponent off playing AOE as opposed to you know procking the egg yourself. Absolutely. So Colanto decides to go with Torison instead of Hellfire. With the Hellfire, he'll t take so much damage. Seven, uh, free to face, and then from the Spider, it will be really close to dying. With Emperor, he at, at least has a chance to have some better quality plays next turn, and will try to to get back. But there is still five, eight damage on board at the moment, and Stansivka is not stopping here. He's just developing his board further, deal uh, dealing with everything that's being played. Yeah, even the two hit on the implosion, although obviously you'd want to hit for four, it's not terrible because what he does is he, you know, he hits for two, gets the juggles, trades one of the minions in. So again, his board isn't like super weak to Hellfire. He's not committed too much to the board yet. He still, as you said, had the Dark Iron Dwarf, still got an imp gang boss with Friend of Argus. You know, he still has enough juice that the AoE can come down and then, it, you know, he just swarms the board again and puts some more pressure on. And the Warlock's on 10 health at the moment. So. Yeah. But Kalento is feeling that pressure, definitely. But he got the Hellfire, uh, well, he had Hellfire and he got the Twilight Guardian, so at least he will be able to stop the attack from the Nerubian. Uh, the bad news for Kalento is that Sansifka still has the Dark Iron Dwarf, so not only he will be able to just buff the Ner Nerubian and kill the Guardian, he will also be able to play his uh, Imp Gang boss. Yeah. And Kalento He's, is uh... not going for the Hellfire here. Yeah, I think he knows that the problem with the Hellfire is it leaves the um, the Nerubian on full health, right? Which means it, it can easily deal with the Guardian if there's any buffs down. And you know from Zoo, you almost always expect them to have something buff in the terms of Power Overwhelming, Abusive, Dark Iron Dwarf. Uh, so it's really hard to, to play around that. So he's dropped down one of the big game hunters. A, a, sort of a weird nuance of the Malagos lock is that it does run two big game hunters, which versus this style of Zoo is actually a bit rough because it seems much more low curve and not many minions at all to... Uh, to, to, you know, like, have that second attack to insta-kill. Yeah. A really nice play there from Stan Sivka, just using, uh, again, trading with the board, dealing with, with the minions, and uh, drawing a card as well, instead of just dropping whatever he uh, he had in the hand at the time. Yep, and yet again, Stan Sivka settled the board in such a way that Hellfire doesn't really do much. I think he's already seen at least one coil, uh, and next turn he... Um, even if some of the minions get rid of, he has to find Argus for an extra plus two damage potentially. You know, he's in. So it puts Kalento under so much pressure. This has been like such a rough series for Kalento in this Maligos Warlock. What can he even do? Dark Peddler into Soulfire? 
does it help him? Dark Peddler into Coil? Not really. Like, you cannot Hellfire this board. You're just dead if da you do that. Dark Peddler into Coil, into Healbot, and then hope next turn <laughs> for something else? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's very rough. These Twilight Drakes, again, like, good early on, but when the zoo's been this fast, like, you know, having a four attack minion with a million health is fine, but if you can't taunt it up, then the zoo just happily ignores it anyway. So, uh, pretty useless. He's gone for Dark Peddler. We can't actually see what card it is, so we'll see. Oh! That's a taunt! <laughs> it is a taunt! Fair enough. Um, does this... I mean, this well, does stop lethal, right? And he's in, in his mind, it does stop lethal, but we know there's 7 plus 2 at least, so it's lethal anyway. Yeah. Uh, but um, it looked good for a moment. Like, he did what he could to stop lethal, but the Defender of Argus, Sansifka, can, can seal this game and uh, seal the match as well. So 3-0 versus Colento. Yeah, that's a pretty nice start for Stan Sifka. Now he only needs to win one more game versus the winner of uh, his dog versus Sixo. And so he's put himself in a really strong position, whereas Kalento, for a start, getting 3 0 never feels good. But also now he cannot drop a set if he wants to move through to the uh, to the stage after groups. That's absolutely right. So, Raven, let's do a quick uh, recap. We're watching Hearthstone Champions League. $10,000 prize pool. The players that we have, the lineup is really stacked. We have, today at least, we have Colento, Stansivka, and then Sixo versus Dog coming up next. Group A is going to be played out today fully. So we'll know who gets eliminated and who goes through to the single elimination stage. All the matches are being played in best of five conquest format. And then tomorrow, we'll have Eco, RDU, Pavel, Hoy playing in Group B. Thursday, Group C, Show, Life Coach, Strife Crow, Orange, and I, I'm really excited to see Strife Crow playing in a tournament because I haven't seen him um, in, in some time. Well, I, I did see him playing the, the Red Bull tournament uh, yeah. this weekend, but that wasn't constructed. So I'm, I'm really curious what Strife Crow has in store. And then Group D will have Ostkaka, the World Champion, Hannibal Z2, the Dreamhack Champion, Tides of Time, and Tys NL. Yeah, wow. so, I mean, like, yeah, WoW pretty much sums it up, let's be honest. This tournament is contained some of the, well, a, a massive chunk of the best players in the world. And like you were saying about Striker, I'm interested to see Tides as well. Um, you, you know, he uh, has a bit of a love-hate relationship with Hearthstone sometimes, a bit on and off. But um, he was at the Team Brawl as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was there so, playing with, um, I believe, Strife and Hafu. Yeah, so see what he's going to bring to the table and how he's going to perform is going to be interesting as well. But every single group, I mean, <laughs> how do you even call who do you think? I was going to ask you, so who do you think is going to make out of the groups? And in all honesty, you could say anyone. And it's like, yeah, okay, you know, it's pre pretty reasonable. There's no one where like, no, they won't make it through. Because you could literally pick any two of each of these players out of each group. And they're just as likely to go through as any others. There's no clear favorites in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you, Raven. And uh, I want to give a shout out to, to G2A, Steel Series, and Twitch, who are sponsoring this tournament and making it happen. And uh, right now, we're going to jump into a short break while we prepare the next match for you guys. So stay tuned for more Hearts in Action.